All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're looking at another Hoodland. Uh, previously, I had reviewed a Hoodland Omega Speedmaster homage, um, so you can see that on my channel from a week or two ago. Um, this is a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms homage, which I mentioned I had coming in the mail. Um, and this is going to be compared in the video to the Reef Tiger I reviewed previously, as well as the uh, new Blanc Pond Swatch uh, collaboration. Um, so I'll set that aside. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that in this video. Um, but I wanted to buy this watch kind of to show you what you get for your money as an alternative to that swatch. And um, I'm hoping, based on what I've seen, that the design and the dimensions of this watch are going to be much better than not only this watch, but also that Reef Tiger uh, that I reviewed previously. So I did take the watch out of the plastic already, just because that is a huge pain in the butt. And uh, as far as the case goes that this comes in, um, I appreciate that they did throw it in this. These protect the watches really well in transit. Other than that, it's just your standard AliExpress stuff. They throw a sticker on it with the brand, and uh, it's pretty much a pencil box that you would have in kindergarten. Um, but it does have foam in it, and it pre protects the watch nicely, so uh, that's nice. So right away, let's just take a look at the watch real quick. I'll give you that, and then I'll set it aside and go over everything else in the box here. Um, as far as the... Accessories, they give you kind of an FKM style Tropic strap here with a, uh, a spring bar that is very loose. And then this one has a quick release spring bar. So that's interesting that one has a quick release and one does not. And then of course they give you a spring bar removal tool, which is nice of them, um, but typically not worth keeping. As far as instructions go, we have a tiny little pamphlet, primarily in Chinese, but there is some English. Um, I did see something I want to mention. So they have a lot of different references on here. So this is not specific to our watch. Um, it does say a couple different caliber options on here. Some of them are just not true. The 2A24 is not offered in any of their watches. Neither is the SW200 from what I can tell. Maybe they have a Miyota and a Seiko. Uh, but what this is is a PT5000 which is an SW200 um, alternative. It is a Chinese version of that same movement. So um, interesting that they, they included all of those uh, caliber references in there. Pulling the watch out. I really love the look of this watch straight up. It's just a good looking watch. I really like the, the dial compared to the Reef Tiger. Um, the colors of the loom that water indicator, the date wheel position, and as well as the uh, the color match date wheel. I like the uh, arrowhead seconds hand and the bezel all look good. This is just a, a really handsome watch. And uh, we'll go over all the specifics here, uh, dial, bezel, case, movement, strap. And then I will, uh, I'll give you a little loom shot and we'll take a look at the swatch in comparison as far as dimensions and uh, a few other talking points there. So looking at the dial, I'm going to zoom in here real quick. I do have to clean it up a little bit. We have um, loomed hour indices um, just painted on. There's no applied indices to speak of. Um, on the dial, we have Crudeland Custom. Custom, I'm assuming, is referencing the fact that this is not a one-for-one -one homage clone. They did a couple things to tweak the design here and there. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure why they would include that word. The water indicator is probably just for show and I'm guessing is loomed. I'm highly skeptical that that is a real water indicator. It doesn't appear to be, um, but it is kind of a cool throwback reference to the classic Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms as well as the Swatch Antarctic or Arctic. One of the two has the, uh, the uh, hour indicator, or sorry, the water indicator on there. And it kind of is colored like the no radiations symbol as well. Um, so if you're familiar with the swatch of the Blanc Pond, um, the water indicator and the, and the uh, no radiation symbol are kind of cool throwbacks. And this is kind of like a combo of the two, I guess. The bezel itself, um, I'm not sure if this is sapphire on the bezel, but it is nice. Um, the edges are coined um, or etched out. Ooh, <laughs> I don't love that. I don't know if you could hear it, but uh, 
it's a pretty mushy bezel. The one thing that is nice is there's not a ton of play, especially back play. On the Reef Tiger, you'll remember um, it had horrible, horrible back play, and uh, one of the reasons I returned the watch. But this bezel is acceptable in every way, con considering the price paid and the look of the watch and everything. I think it's totally fine. Um, it is slightly off. There we go. So let's move on to the strap itself. So I'm going to zoom back out here. We have a sailcloth style strap, and this is exactly the type of strap I'd want to wear on a watch like this. Um, I've the, the the 50 fathoms I've seen in person have all been on sailcloth. Um, is it an Artem style sailcloth? No, this is a stiff, pretty cheap AliExpress sailcloth. Uh, Hrudland on the buckle there, laser etched. Um, I'm sure this is a shared strap between other models. Uh, the one questionable thing is that the back is leather instead of rubber sailcloth you typically wear because you're around water and having leather on the back around salt, salt water doesn't make a ton of sense but i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt because they are a value brand and they are trying to cut costs wherever they can and as far as the look goes for everyday wear um, this will probably be a very comfortable strap once it breaks in and it is like a good looking strap on top of that uh, moving on to the case Taking a look at the side here, we have an unsigned crown. Uh, case shape is very similar to what we saw on the Reef Tiger and on the Blanc Pond Swatch collaboration. The lugs are not drilled out here like they were on the Reef Tiger and like they are on the Swatch, um, which is a good and a bad thing, I guess. On the Swatch, you do need a 9 or 0.9 millimeter um, hex key to remove a screw cap here, and then you can pull the spring bars out. Because that watch is plastic, some people have been breaking those or stripping them out. Um, it would have been nice to see them drill these out because it is a lot nicer. Well, it's, it's, it's a personal preference thing, I guess. I like drilled out lugs because you can swap the spring bars out really easily. Um, this strap has no flex and no play and is like right up against the case here. So you're not really gonna have a ton of room to get a strap tool in there. And remove that spring bar but um, it is what it is um, probably a cost saving measure as well and for all intents and purposes it's a good looking case um, the other side we have Hruland written on the case itself which is a common complaint on the swatch and as well as the block pond people really only hate it because invicta does it too on the pro diver so the invicta pro diver which is a Submariner homage, says Invicta on the side, and people think it's cheap. I really could not care any less. I think it's totally fine. You're barely even going to see it. Um, it is a reference to the Blanc Pond, which is a very expensive watch, and if they can do it, it's fine. I'm not going to complain about that. It is a lot of letters to put on the side of a case with this name, um, so that'd be my only thing, but other than that, I don't mind it. Um, the case back, man, this is a... I don't know if I need to wash my hands or what, but this this watch is attracting every fingerprint. Uh, 220 meters of water resistance, which is 660 feet. Uh, it says custom there. Hruland, got this uh, scuba guy, which is laser etched in. It's always nice that they do something. Um, and then this says, what does this say? Uh, I'm guessing this is north, north degrees 90. I'm not sure what that is a reference to, but... That's very cool. And let's see. Let's talk about the movement here. I'll, we do have a screw down crown. The crown is not as good as it is on the Swatch or on the Blanc Pond. It is similar style, but it's not quite, they didn't dig the grooves out quite as much. So it is kind of a, a smooth crown. Um, I wish it did have a, a few more like edges and made it a little bit easier to grab and turn. Um, it's a little smooth for, for my taste. And then we do have a little bit of wobble here on the crown as well. Um, I'm doubting that's by design, but it might be. Sometimes they'll do that to keep the stem from, from uh, breaking if you hit it. Although this does have crown guards, so who, who knows. Um, this is a PT5000 movement, which is based off of the Salida SW200. It winds very similarly. Uh, it does have a hacking movement. You can set the date in the first position and uh, set the time in the second. So, you know, pretty standard stuff there. Screw this back down. 
it is a serviceable movement, but for the price of the watch that we paid, um, it would be easier to just buy a new watch or swap another movement in instead of servicing it. So that's all I've got there. Let's take a look at the loom here. I'll turn the light off quickly and we'll go ahead and charge this up. So you can see right away we've got loomed bezel, which is always nice to see. We've got really good loom on the hour indices and on the hands and even on that uh, water indicator. And it's not completely dark in my room and you can already see the loom is very bright. So uh, it's, a, it's a green color. I don't know if it's super luminova or what. It doesn't say on the, on the watch specifications. Um, I could have maybe looked into it a little bit more, but the date window is not loomed. It's the only thing that isn't loomed from what I can tell. And overall, I'd say the loom is, is solid. It's very good. So turning that back on, let's pull over the swatch real quick and I'll compare the two. So looking at the watches themselves, there is a, a considerable size difference right away and considerable meaning like a millimeter or two, but I do think that the Rula is going to wear better. Um, you can see the references and inspiration on the Rulin compared to the actual block pond swatch. The hands are different. The indices are different. The, um, pretty much everything on the dial is different except for the date placement. Uh, the bezel is functionally identical. The crown, the, you know, you can see they've did their best on the Rulin to copy this crown, but it is definitely a better crown on the, uh, swatch. They both feature an automatic movement. This one uses the, the System 51 from Swatch. It's a non-serviceable movement. Um, the regulation and timekeeping on that movement is uh, suspect, and you know I wouldn't expect you know perfect timekeeping on it. The PT 5000, I I can't tell you whether it is you know as good or or better really, but from experience, the SW 200 and the ETA 2824 are much better timekeeping movements and. This being functionally an identical movement, um, I would assume that the Hrudlin will keep better time. Um, so with that being said, and I think the hour, the, the power reserve on this one's better too. With that all being said, let's take a look at the dimensions of both, and then I'll put the Hrudlin on my wrist and show you how it wears. To the crown, we are looking at 45, let's say. Um, Case-wise, we're looking at, let's, let's call it 40. Um, lug to lug. 46 point, let's just call it 46. And thickness wise, we're looking at 20, or sorry, 12.2. And we do have uh, some curved sapphire crystal there, um, which is adding some height. So I think they could have even made this watch thinner if they had wanted to, although I really do love that curved crystal. I think that's a classic uh, diver's watch thing. Uh, looking at the swatch, we have 46 and a half to the crown, 42 looks like on the case, and then let me pull this out. I do have my own uh, video coming up with the swatch, so I'm not going to do too much today with this, but 14.2 thickness, quite a bit thicker, um, and then lug to lug, we're looking at 48. So I'll put that aside. Uh, as far as looks go, I like the look of the Hrudlin better. I think that it's, you know, it's a stainless steel case versus plastic. You've got a, a let's say, quote unquote, better mechanical movement because better is a matter of opinion, really. Um, I like the look of this watch more than this watch, and we'll leave it at that. This watch, if you can find it at the Swatch store, is $400 cannot be purchased online unless you're going to eBay. And if you do, you'll find it uh, scalped at like $800, $900, um, which is pretty silly because it's not a limited edition piece. And by the way, I'm wearing my uh, Omega Seamaster Quartz today. This is the mid-size Peter Blake edition. Um, yeah, it's not worth scalping um, that swatch. It just, you know, they're, they're not a limited edition watch. They will come in stock at some point. It's just a matter of whether you have a swatch store in your area. And uh, I, I just, it would be nice if they sold them online, but I see why they won't. It's a marketing thing. So the, the strap is nice so far on the Fruitland, although I am in the final strap position. So 
Uh, if you have a six and a quarter inch wrist like me or smaller, you're gonna want a different strap. Um, this is a little tight and stiff right now. I'm hoping that the strap will break in on a, on a pillow, but the dimensions of this watch wear really well on me. Um, this is a better wearing watch than the Reef Tiger, and I'm guessing it wears better than the Swatch. I haven't really had that on my wrist yet, but the dimensions of this wear well on me. The, the lugs are not hanging over my wrist. The thickness of the watch is very good. That Reef Tiger was considerably thicker. Um, so if you want to go back and look at that video, you can. I would rather buy this Rudeland. Um, that Swatch I mentioned is $400. This Rudeland is $315. And you can order this. It is in stock online right now on AliExpress, and I will link the watch in the description. Um, there is no weight. There's no scalping. Um, you're getting a stainless steel 50 fathoms reference, arguably with better dimensions for most people. Uh, it has a lot of the homage things done correctly. Color matched date wheel in the right position. You've got a water indicator slash like no radiations reference. Uh, really good loom, decent strap, and an alternative strap included. For $315, you get it shipped to you in a week or two. Uh, this watch is one of the better watches I've purchased on AliExpress, and I would recommend buying it. Time will tell whether you know this watch is high quality or not, um, but I really like the watch, and uh, I hope you guys did too. So with that, I'll let you go, and I'll see you in the next one.